In this video, we're going to present the second derivative test. I'm actually not a big fan of the second derivative test, but it's pretty classic material. It will be good for you to at least see it, although you'll never be required to use it if you don't want to. And the reason for that is that the second derivative test is a method for classifying local extrema. And we already have a method for classifying local extrema, namely the first derivative test. So on tests and stuff, you're certainly going to have to classify local extrema, but I'm never going to tell you which test to you. Is the first derivative test or the second derivative test, whichever one you prefer. Although actually the second derivative test is slightly more limited than the first derivative test. The first derivative test works for any critical value. So it works when the derivative is zero and it works when the derivative doesn't exist. For the second derivative test, we need the derivative to equal zero. So say we have a critical value where the derivative equals zero. And say further that the second derivative exists. Then if the second derivative is positive, this critical value is a local min. If the second derivative is negative, this critical value is a local max. If this derivative equals zero, the second derivative test fails and we don't get any useful information. So I said up front that I don't really like the second derivative test. It's always seemed to me like it's kind of objectively worse than the first derivative test. Um, you can only use the second derivative test at some critical values, and the second derivative test can fail. Neither of those things are true of the first derivative test. Still, let's go ahead and do an example or rather redo an example. Let's look at this example again, but this time we're going to use the second derivative test. To use the second derivative test, we're going to need a second derivative. So, which you can think of as another reason that I like this less. You have to take more derivatives. In this case, though, taking the second derivative of this isn't hard. The second derivative 
of 3x squared minus 8x plus 3. We've got 6x minus 8. And the critical values we found when we did this example last time were these. Both of these critical values were a result of the derivative being zero. So we can attempt the second derivative test. I say attempt because the second derivative test can fail if the derivative happens to be zero. That didn't happen here though. We classify this as a local max because this is negative. This as a local min because this is positive. And of course, that's precisely what we got when we used the first derivative test.